Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate the intro. Uh, this is Astalon Tears of the Earth. This is a PC Metroidvania game that came out uh, just last year. And uh, yeah, it's got various characters and things like that. We can talk about that as the run gets started. Uh, I've got my co-commentator Colt here with me, if you want to say your little intro piece. Yep. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Awesome. We will get right into it. Uh, there's a lot to explain, but we're going to kind of have ample opportunity to do so. Uh, time is going to start after the initial load. It's a little bit hard to gauge, uh, so I'm just going to kind of feel it out and time it in for you guys if you are ready on the counter. Sweet. All right, so the initial load happens. It's a little bit of a pause, and we're going to start in... Go. Let's go. All right, so this is Asylon. Um You start off with three main characters, and in the Any% percent run, uh, you're basically only going to see the three main characters. This is Algus. Algus is basically going to be our powerhouse for the majority of the run. Uh, all points or all orbs spent on characters for upgrades are going to be spent on Algus. Uh, our other two characters are going to kind of have like minor roles throughout the start and you know, different uh, movement sections in the later game. But basically, it's going to be the Alga show for the majority of the run. There's two extra characters that you guys are not going to see in this run, uh, but are featured in the All Bosses run, which is also great. If uh, you guys want to check that out. Um, I call the other two characters blue and red, just for ease. Yeah, uh, Colt, I think that's most of us. <laughs> uh, Colt, do you want to kind of explain what's going on with these funky jumps here? Yeah, so uh, we're not meant to make these high jumps here to grab the ladder. We're doing a animation interrupt on the swing to jump higher. Uh, normally you'd have to go through the three different directions here with the different characters. And it's kind of like a tutorial to say, uh, hey, this character can do this, this character can do that. And we're gonna skip that by trying to this jump off. It's a little wonky, it doesn't always work. And uh, hopefully we get it here soon, there we go. Yeah, that's a, a max height uh, blue jump is what we would typically refer to it as. Essentially, you can normally jump three tiles high with blue and you can jump anywhere between extra and like up to four. Uh, so to grab the ladder, you actually have to get the maximal, maximum possible height uh, with that RNG and we have no control over that. So literally the run starts and tutorial skip is a roll of the dice. How well is it going to go? Uh, you're going to see a couple more of those jumps through. Some of them are going to be a lot easier because they're going to be just like slightly more than three tiles, but some of them are going to be max height. Definitely. Uh, and another thing to note here is we're going to be collecting orbs. This is kind of like the currency of the game, and that's what's going to allow us to buy upgrades. Uh, that's all these little things that are scattering around. We just broke a mask, and that's going to multiply how many orbs we collect by two. And that does stack. There's a couple other masks in the route, uh, but we won't be getting one another one for quite a while. This initial loop kind of like explains to you how the mechanics of the game work. The idea basically is uh, Algus has made a pact with Epimetheus that until he basically succeeds and fulfills his goal that he will be brought back to life and in exchange uh, Epimetheus gets his soul. So the whole idea is um, that little spell that we cast at the very start in the intro as Algus kind of wandered into the area is meant to bring us back to life every time we die. The other characters aren't aware of it, and that's kind of what happens and develops with the story uh, as you rest at campsites and stuff like that, is like Algus explains to them the situation, they become aware of it. Uh, but right now, they're not aware that anything's going on. Uh, so we're gonna take the force death that uh, introduces this whole concept of respawning, um, making your shot purchases on death and things like that. And uh, it's gonna happen in this kind of brutal encounter with the Black Knight. He's the, the big baddie that's introduced to us here that's going to wipe the whole party. Uh, luckily, uh, the devs introduced something that would spit the text. We just hold a button and all the text boxes go away as fast as possible. So sorry if you wanted to hear the story, you're going to have to buy the game. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, Matt and John have been absolutely phenomenal at taking feedback from us about just kind of like bugs that we encountered in casual playthrough that we thought was maybe impactful, not only just to the speedrun as well, uh, but even above and beyond that for things of quality of life, like the tech skip for speedrunners, for example. 
Uh, Epimetheus, by the way, was pondering his orb before it was cool. Just gonna put that out there. I believe he exists outside of time, so. <laughs> so that very first shot purchase, you're gonna think, okay, well, we had to take this fourth force death. Um, why would you go all the way down and take the time to duplicate your orbs, knowing that you're going to have to take this force death so quickly? And that's because we want orb attract. Um, orbs are basically gonna be the lifeblood of our entire run and all of the upgrades. So you're not gonna wanna have to chase them. This is yep. kind of the reintro part, and it's like, hey, we've all just arrived. And Algus is like, yes, we've all just arrived. Um, in terms of accessibility options as well, uh, big props to the devs. I personally, before we, we started the run here, I actually turned off full screen flashes um, because I know people have photosensitivity and things like that. Um, so in the accessibility options, you can actually turn off the full uh, white screen flash and what. It's also worth noting, you're supposed to take four damage ticks from uh, those masks, but if you do the damage quick enough, you can actually uh, only take damage three times. And the damage that you take is based on your max health. So we're going to see that kind of like change a little bit as we go, but essentially the whole idea is we're only going to ever want to take three pings of damage from that. Uh, in PB attempts, you would generally ride really low health levels for the purpose of quick death warps after bosses. You're not going to see me do that in the interest of marathon safety. And also in the interest of marathon safety, I'm going to collect an extra blue key here. And we're actually going to use it to get an extra health upgrade early because the run is uh, kind of scary. Not going to lie. And you you might have noticed the, uh, the little candles there. That's very similar to Shovel Knight style where you break them and you gain health and then they're permanently used. There is an upgrade you can buy if you die to bring them back. But hopefully won't die any extra and won't have to buy any more. It was a really nice double blue jump. Yep, that's great. So that's uh, abusing the mechanic that we saw at the very start and during the tutorial section. We can jump higher than it's intended with blue here. All right, another max height ladder jump here. We're going to hope this one goes better than the tutorial skip did. And these are the. This is the hardest glitch in the game to make full use out of. That was pretty fast. Yeah, I'd take that any day. All right, so this is gonna be the safety help that I'm gonna take. It's early on. It's quick enough that, like, if you're just starting out running this game, grab that health. Take, take the extra snake room. Grab the blue key. Grab that health. No reason not to. It's also uh, worth uh, noting this game auto saves, uh, and it auto saves on your death. So there's no real backups that you could normally plan for, because kind of you take a death and like it's not like you can just reset and load your game or anything like that. Yeah, that's kind of the roguelike element where they don't intend for you to just be able to load up a save wherever you just were. You have to work your way back. So that was our first encounter with a Cyclops. Um, you're going to see a few of them throughout the run. So we're using an extra as... blue key here to grab all these extra orbs, and that's how important they are to buy upgrades later on. Fun little feature of the game. Uh, you can basically completely buffer your jump inputs to the point where if you press jump any time while you're in the air before you land, you will immediately jump when you land, uh, which is kind of nice. As long as you expect it. Yes. I also had a slight pause there to wait for that snake because I didn't want to get hit by him when he moved. Uh, snakes move random distances, so you can't always interpret what they're going to do. Yeah, they also like to immediately go towards you if you hit them right before they move. Then they'll move towards you instead of away from you. So you got to yeah. kind of <laughs> That's why, again, you'll always wait until they s like do their movement first. It's it you gotta always be reactive with snakes. I'm gonna play this a little safe because this guy's hitbox is chonky. Yeah, there there's no real good cycle to make. You kind of just have to wait. All right, We're gonna do our first character swap here. I'm gonna take red. Uh, so her special ability basically is that she can do a single wall jump right now. Uh, we're gonna expand that later to multiple wall jumps. Uh, but right now that's kind of her gimmick. She uses a bow, so she's also a ranged character. 
And the bow is also the slowest attack speeds in the game, so uh, we don't like to use her. It's not very easy to use. You have to make sure your, your shots count. You also try and, like, jump into shots or jump out of shots to minimize the time that you're grounded. So, like, I'll start the attack animation there as I'm in mid-jump. Yeah, like any good retro game, whenever you do an attack, it's going to have a, a lock you in place animation. And we're going to stick skip those as much as we can by jumping while we attack. I actually had the liberty of still having that block because it's normally supposed to crumble under your feet. So that almost threw me for a loop because it was safer than I was used to. <laughs> yeah, as long as you jump within one or two frames of hitting a, a block that's going to be destroyed after you hit it, it, it won't. It'll just ignore it. So. Get ready for everyone's favorite key in the run, the booty key. The booty key. Great room. Devs have a sense of humor. It's funny too, because when it comes to runs, the devs have really taken kind of like opposite perspectives because John was all excited about the runs and wanted to kind of know what was up. And then Matt, um, Matt was of the mindset that he kind of didn't want to know what we were doing because he didn't want to feel inclined, I guess was my understanding, to impact the run, whether that be like positive or like accidentally take something away. Um, hopefully he takes in this run and enjoys it. Um, but big shout out to the both of them. They've been amazing at not only making the game, but like communication with us has been phenomenal. <laughs> There's no oh, other way to put that. Yeah. When we first started the speedrun Discord, uh, John was on board. He was in. He's like, "Let's see what you got. What's going on?" And then Matt's like, eh, "Maybe don't want to see that stuff because I don't want to be feel like I have to fix it." So no, they've both been great though, and I think Matt's gotten a little uh, more accepting and just like loving everything that's happening and all the attention. Yeah, honestly, this game, in my opinion, deserves to get more attention. Um, the map is gigantic. Like casually, I think Hundo took me like 12 hours or something like that. Um, there's tons of items that are specialized for each character. Each character has lots of really unique attacks and stuff like that. Uh, there's two extra characters, like I said, that you won't see today, but are absolutely uh, a treat. One of them is essentially a Belmont, if you love your Castlevania games. One of them is essentially a Belmont, let's be frank. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Um, so uh -huh. here, we didn't really explain it, but as we're going, we're hitting these uh, little eyeball glowy things that are in the background. We did six of them to get this item, and this item is going to allow us to uh, kill ghosts that we haven't seen yet. Otherwise, you can't attack them. So it's very important for later for a major skip. Yeah, the fact that it kills the ghost is kind of like secondary. It will come in handy, and we're definitely going to use that ability as it's meant to, um, but primarily our goal for getting this and the reason for getting this was for the sequence break. Which was actually discovered by Colt by accident. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, during my casual playthrough, I ended up doing a skip and uh, then we had to figure out what made it work. And it was surprisingly, it was a very specific set of conditions, so. Yeah, um, basically with Algus, you're gonna see me pick up the Arcanist ability, which the Arcanist ability increases his projectile size. Um, Algus like, is a wizard, so he does shots. They're not full screen distance. It's not uh, the range of the bow, for example. But um, he's going to get uh, Alchemist, which is going to make his projectile larger and have two surrounding projectiles. And when you get Banish, it actually changes the two surrounding projectiles to be circles instead of just normal shots. And that characteristic is what lets us do the sequence break and actually hit the switch. Um, because it changes the hitbox just enough in our favor. Yeah, yeah, we're talking like one pixel, like just enough. Um, here's our first boss, though. It's a lot of fun. As you can see, it has a nice hitbox or uh, health bar going on here. We're going to try to get as many hits as we can. Uh, it is entirely random where this boss spawns. It's going to be left or right on either the left side or the right side. And then after it appears twice, it's going to have this intermission phase where there's spikes coming up across from either left to right, right to left, or from both sides to the middle. Uh, we want both sides to the middle. <laughs> is the best RNG we can get. So as far, it's not looking good. The starting RNG was great, though. He spawned, and so is this. Like, if he yeah, pops up right great. next to me... This is oh. great. Uh, we're not worrying about our health here, because we are going to be taking a death pretty soon. Holy heck. That was, <laughs> a, that was a great kill. That was a great... <laughs> 
We're not worried about health is right. I'm gonna have to take four you're, damage you're boosts to die. Lose time. We're too high health here. <laughs> yeah. Um, marathon safety though. Like normally, ideally with this fight, you want to finish with less than seven health. Um, but we're not gonna ride those lines today. <laughs> not a huge deal. It's gonna take us maybe an extra five to seven minutes to de-boost down at this point. Uh, but that was that was a great fight. We had uh, semi okay RNG. Well, actually, great RNG in where the spawns were, but not great RNG in the intermission. So here we're going to take our first death, our purposeful death, at least that's not forced, and we're going to use all the orbs we've collected to buy some very key upgrades. All right, it's the Alga Show. Arcanist attack speed up, and then a whole bunch into strength up. Yep. So we're going to do more damage. We're going to do it faster. And our projectiles are going to be a little bigger. And we're back. So as you can see, as we die, we get sent to right to the back with the last character where we were selected. And then we're going to have to make our way back to wherever we need to be. Here we're going to take the mask once again so we get the multiplier for our orbs. Every time that we kill something, we get extra orbs from it, and that's important as we go. It's worth the, the little detour and the damage to come down here and get it. This time we're going to go back. I picked up the Ascendant key um, about ten and a half minutes in, and uh, that's what activates the elevators. You're going to see it used multiple times throughout just for the sake of death warping, but also because after the next boss, we're actually going to be coming back to this section for the sake of routing. Yep. Fun fact, you can't use the elevator unless you have the elevator key. So <laughs> it's kind of important to grab because if we don't, then we can't go back and forth or there would be no forced deaths, which is what we do in the new game plus run. We don't even grab the key because we don't need any upgrades. We don't need to die. So. Um, it is your major safety. It's kind of like a checkpoint system. So if you're later in the game and you don't have the key, you're kind of, you know, not going to have a good time. So the key is very, very useful. So in very traditional marathon luck, um, since they've put out the speedrun beta patch that we've been using with the tech skip and whatnot, I haven't got the character swap glitch since then. Uh, and I just got it <laughs> when, I, when I swapped <laughs> to Algus. Um, I almost got hit during that Cyclops fight uh, because I was trying to control forced momentum. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there, there is a minor glitch that sometimes when you character swap or when certain things happen that you'll let go of your controls and your directions and your character will keep running. That's mostly been fixed, but apparently still happens. So it's a really good jump. Uh, if you don't get that blue jump right away, this can be really frustrating because um, this guy will kind of like throw projectiles onto the edge and uh, then even prevent you from getting up and take more damage. Um, so another you... thing to note, the each of these characters kind of have their special little oh. deal that they're doing. Uh, Algus, he can activate magical things, like on this screen, you'll see to the right, there's a little uh, mouth with a black orb in it. He can activate those magic balls that changes how the room is laid out. All the triggers, anytime you activate something, that room is what's affected. So it's uh, you don't have to like hit a switch here and wonder what's happening five screens away. It's pretty cool. And uh, here's our first time actually fighting Black Knight. We saw him early when he instantly killed our party through the uh, cutscene. Now we get to fight him. And as you can see, he's kind of a pushover here. He's just walking towards us. We're we're backing away, not getting by him. Don't really care what he's doing. And that's our first encounter with him. And it won't be our last. In fact, this is the ghost enemy, so you actually need Banish to kill that. Yep, if you don't have Banish, then all your damage just passes right through any ghost. So, uh, for the most part, it's not a big deal, but like we mentioned earlier, we have a major skip that requires us to have it anyway, and it's just helpful in the run. If I was doing PB attempts, I would damage boost here, um, but we're going to subject you guys to a little bit of platform waiting. Uh, if we maybe want to sneak in a quick donation. All right, well, we have a $3,000 donation here from Dangen Entertainment. Thank you for your hard work on making this Astalon run possible. We're glad that indie games can contribute to charities and make the world a better place. Wow, thank you so much. That's amazing. Big thanks. 
So we just grabbed our second mask there, and it further ups our multiplayer. So every time we get orbs, we're going to get four times the amount that they're worth. So these platforms used to be absolutely terrible. Uh, there used to be a glitch, basically, that when you would land on one of those moving platforms, essentially your character could disappear. Um, sometimes you would fall through. Sometimes you would, like, flicker. Um, and again, the they persistently tackled uh, us trying to uh, address that. We're like, you know what? It's, it's still an issue. It's still an issue. And uh, there's that sequence break there. Yep. Those, that, uh, that's where we need the larger projectiles, so... Uh, the devs were great in taking that to heart because, like, for me, that platform caused anxiety. Like, I would glitch out on that platform and take damage. And it's not that it would, like, ruin your entire run, but Volantis, our next boss, you really want to have the most health possible for. Um, it's a scary fight as a new runner. I really love the fight. I think I'm probably the only one that will say that. Uh, I mean, it, it can be fun once you know it, but it's definitely a heavy reset point for any new runner. Yeah. Um, Volantis is all about reading the patterns and reacting accordingly. Um, and it's very easy for this fight to go off the rails and you end up losing more health. Uh, I'm going to do a safe version. Normally I would like damage boost through a beam and kind of do this tactically to maximize damage that I do in the first phase and minimize the time in the second phase. Again, we're going to be playing this safe. Yep, so first phase involves us hitting this face as much as we can. He has a, a couple of different attacks he's going to throw at us in a pattern. They're random, we don't know which it's going to be, but we have to react accordingly. Most of it's just running back and forth and hoping we don't get hit. And then once it's reached a certain health threshold, it's going to go to phase two here. We point on the, uh, the butt. Yep, right, usually anything sparkly is going to be a weak point. As, as per usual. This boss does have many different patterns. It's either going to come from the left or right, and then there's slow, there's fast, and there are also different sine wave patterns it can take. So you have to be really careful where you're standing and react in just a, less than a second, really, to make sure you don't get hit and take extra damage. Uh, we do have some a lot of extra health now, so we can take several hits. We're fine. Yeah, here's a damage boost here. Yeah, here's a top slow pattern. We almost always take damage boost there on that one. Take another one here. Overhead wiggles. Shout outs to Dave. Uh, this is the worst one. It, it's you're gonna see it in pretty much any inner percent fight because the fight does take a little while in any percent. Uh, you just gotta stand there and wait. <laughs> And here we go, finish it off. Nice, nice. That was a really good fight. Thank you. Yeah, I have no complaints about that. Uh, we got the high sine wave pattern, which is kind of what you want to see. It lasts uh, the longest. It's definitely the one you can take the most advantage of in terms of doing damage. Um, I almost skipped overhead wiggles yesterday without doing the extended damage on phase one. Uh, so to do more damage on phase one, you would actually like reduce how much you do slightly and after the three initial attacks the mouth does a big beam attack and you actually kind of want to let the boss do that beam attack for the sake of then damage boosting through it and doing more damage during phase one because it's easier and faster than doing damage in phase two um but i i was doing safe marathon strats yesterday and uh, i still almost skipped overhead wiggle somehow i just had really good luck <laughs> And, and by the way, this is uh, another death that we're purposely taking <laughs> so we can use all these delicious orbs that we just got. Because we have the four time multiplier, we're going to have a ton of orbs to use here. And we're just going to upgrade Algus as much as we can. The big one there was um, Shock Field. Uh, so I bought the attack speed up and much more attack up and even a couple defense up. Defense up not really phenomenal it reduces your damage by one uh, and we're very much approaching the glass cannon situation where in the later game you can die in like three hits <laughs> so reducing damage by one isn't really that big of a deal but it's something we can spend anyways and you know make it a little safer i guess but shock field is kind of our, our star player so it stacks additional damage ticks on top of your initial damage uh, you'll see boss health bars melt as a result. 
But uh, you're also going to see kind of a, a little bit of slowdown happen because of those damage ticks. So here we're just making our way back through where we were before, but we're going to take a slightly different route on our way back. We went over to that screen, reset the position of this platform, and we're going to head on up. And this is kind of a secret backdoor area. Yeah, you can see we've got the uh, three different colored keys. Uh, we're going to be picking up a red key here in a moment. Uh, red keys are generally um, the least, or the most rare, sorry. And uh, kind of like they hold the, the biggest secrets and like the most uh, important stuff. Blue keys tend to be more for optional stuff. Um, and then your silver keys or your gray keys or whatever tend to be your like storyline progression for the most part. Yeah, you can see the shock field there just doing work with the damage ticks. Yeah, it creates a, a spot on the screen that continually deals damage based on the percent of your primary attack. So. It's uh, very valuable. I definitely did not need to uh, bump that ghost. Yeah, it probably wasn't optimal. <laughs> All right, big shout outs to Tex here. This is his puzzle. Uh, T. E. X. Uh, fun story, when I was doing runs, I was optimizing basically everything except for that puzzle. Tex was like, you know you could do that faster, right? And I'm like, I know, I just... I'm too lazy right yeah. now to figure out what that pattern is or like what's the optimal way to do it. And he's like, just just press these three buttons. Yeah. So uh, Simple, Tex gets simplest to puzzle ever, and we don't want to spend the time to figure it out. We want to run. <laughs> so we're on our way making making progress towards a key item that's very important to this run. It's actually required in the new percent. We can't progress all the way through the game without it. And uh, it really changes things up. So prior to this point, we could only switch characters when we're at a campfire. Once we get this item, we can switch it whenever we want. <sighs> Sour. I avoided the one ghost, and then the other one came in and hit me anyways. Uh... Here we go. So now we can swap to all the characters we have unlocked whenever you want with just a button press. It cycles in an order. Uh, it's not like a left and right system. It's just one button to, to cycle through, so. And for the most part here, we weren't going to stay on Algus just because he's he's so good damage-wise, but then we'll swap to the other characters to progress where we needed. So this blue uh, kind of veiny wall thing is what we need blue <laughs> to go through. He's the only one that can damage it with his sword. We're going to see if I'm going to instantly regret not taking what would have been a long rest in this small detour, but... Getting hit by the ghost for seven and then getting hit by the additional phantom is a little bit scary. The ghost was entirely my fault, um, but still, seven's a lot of damage that I don't necessarily want to have out in the open. Oh, gross. All right. Oh, rude. It's, it's kind of bad luck. Usually these guys aren't in your hallway that you need to walk in, <laughs> unfortunately. Not a huge deal. At this point, we could probably just walk through. I could, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to potentially risk throwing my orb count out. It shouldn't be that bad, but I'm not going to risk it. All right, let's hope this guy's nice. So far, so good. Go. Nice swap to red. And hopefully we don't touch a spike here. Good, good. So routing this game has been a really fun, uh, somewhat challenging points, but a lot of fun. Uh, there's several different ways to go about things and what keys you need to gather and what directions you can go. And uh, we had a blast sorting all this out. I think it's pretty optimized at this point, but. If anybody has better ideas, we'd love to see you in the Discord and <clears throat> see what you got. Blue has uh, the Teleria boots, which allow him to dash. And a lot of people are surprised that we don't get it in this run. But Teleria is just far enough out of the way that it's really not worth it to go for in any percent. Uh, you definitely get it in all bosses, and you get it kind of as early as possible. I'm not going to lie. I was theory crafting the idea of Teleria in any percent again last night because I couldn't sleep. Um, 
And I'm wondering if it's possible to pop it a little bit earlier and make it work. But as it stands right now, uh, the I dash think boost... maybe in a task setting because you'd have to be very optimized in your movement for the dashes to work out great. Well, I thought of a new place to even put where we would grab it, so I'll uh, I'll discuss it with you at some point later, and kind of we can go over the idea. But I, I think I found a way to maybe reduce the initial upfront cost of how much time we invest to do it. Yeah, that could be potentially a, a little uh, change up for sure. All right, so uh, a lot of these mini bosses we don't particularly care. We only need to kill them when they're forced to be killed to progress. Uh, they take too much time. Even if you can kill them fast, they still have the huge death, death animation. So if we can avoid killing them, we don't usually bother. All right, that ghost plays nice. Yeah, these ghosts are entirely random when they want to spawn. And sometimes, as you'll probably see here coming up in Ash, <laughs> they're not nice. Yeah, and those are the more deadly ones because these ones do like four damage or something like that. Um, the ones in Ash do 15. And we're still going to have 35 max health at that point, so 50 is a lot. <laughs> and I've been trolled uh, in two very recent practice runs with bad spawns, so we're going to see how that goes. Speaking of rooms, you need to kill everything to progress. This is one of them. The little things that this guy spawns don't matter. We just need to kill the main eyeball. Now we're on our way to our next major upgrade, very fun upgrade, and it's really the only other required one that's very necessary to even progress to the end of the game. Yeah, we mentioned how uh, Red is able to do a single wall jump. Well, um, she's now going to be able to do multiple wall jumps. Get equipped with Griffin Claw. All right, here we go. I guess it wasn't that exciting, but... <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to get an RNG Lightning Bolt? I don't no? know. No? Uh, oh, we did! All right, this run has been blessed by RNG Lightning Bolt. Sometimes, for some reason in that room, the lightning just strikes as if you went through the portal, and I have no idea why. Um, but yeah, this run has been blessed by RNG Lightning Bolt. <laughs> I'm okay if they don't fix that one. That one's just fun. Yeah, I don't know if that even works. That's just, just is. Yeah. All right, so these heart enemies are a little bit unique. Um, normally with bosses or mini bosses like the Cyclops and whatnot, when you kill them, um, the projectile disappears. That's actually not the case with those enemies. The hearts, I think, are the only case, aside from maybe a couple main bosses where projectiles don't disappear after the boss is dead. Or the enemy's dead. Yeah, those are pretty much the same thing as uh, Super Mario World with the little plants that spit up the red things. So you gotta watch out for those. They are entirely random when they come down. It's actually a really good comparison. <laughs> Phantoms is usually pretty chill. Like, we're not in that high risk area yet. Like, if you're not paying attention, you could still take a death. But for the most part, I don't find Phantoms as daunting. And nice. here we're actually coming up to our next encounter with the Black Knight. We're going to see what he has in store for us this time. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not really much different than the first fight. We're also going to show him what we have in store for him because the shock field is going to come into play. Jump over once. He's going to do this attack, and hopefully we'll finish before he gets to do anything else just by jumping and going backwards because he's still trying to walk to us. Nice fight. Thank you. The jump over was a little bit scary. Um, when you get shock field, it can actually really throw you because the extra damage ticks and the fact that it causes that lag uh, can interrupt like your jump animations and things like that. So it's actually really easy to accidentally bonk BK uh, if you're just sitting there spamming damage. So I actually kind of let off on my attack when I'm getting ready to do my jump just to make sure I make my jump. It's 
So this section of the game is, uh, this is Ruins of Ash. This is gonna be quite the gauntlet. This is literally the, the, the most challenging reset heavy part of the entire game. Uh, there's a huge gauntlet to go through before you even find another elevator near the top. So even as a casual player, it's pretty rough. A lot of things do tons of damage. Woof. Made that cycle, that's nice. <laughs> This is admittedly but, scary. <laughs> yeah, so far we're doing great on health. We're not really taking a lot of extra damage. Still going fast. I almost got hit by that blob, though. <laughs> I'm actually going to wait this out. This is basically the one spot that you you don't want to take any liberties. Um, like I said, we're going to come up with some enemies that can deal 15 damage. You see my health. Luckily, we do have those those candles that we can hit as we go if we need to refer a health. And if we get really low, we can rest at the campfires uh, and gain anywhere from 15 to 25 or so health uh, per rest. Only a certain amount of times because it's story related, but it is a way to, in an emergency, gain health. Yeah, I'm not going to uh, have too much pride. If I if I need to rest, I'm going to take a rest. <laughs> Uh, it is the one of the biggest time losses to recover your health is to rest. It kind of sucks, but if you got to do it, it's you, something you got to do. Runos was, used to be a heavy reset point for a different reason. Uh, there used to be a bug that if you hit switches in a certain way with red after doing a wall jump, she would actually lose her wall jump. Uh, I'm going to hit this for safety just in case something goes wrong and I need to come back. Um, yeah, that's kind of actually a great thing to point out is that uh, as we're making our way through all this, a lot of these switches actually open up shortcuts to get back to where you were a lot quicker. So if you did die, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to do everything again. And that's kind of the roguelike aspect where you're progressing through the whole game. You're making your progress through getting further and further. And if you do happen to die, it's not game over. You have a huge head start. So. so far, so good. But this is not the scary part of Rune by any means. No, this is the, the relaxed part of Ruins. And uh, it's the longest part of the any percent run for sure to get through. And the worst part is like the part that's scariest is all chunked together because it all has to do with phantom spawns and then potentially doing 15 damage literally as soon as you enter the screen. Um, yep. And uh, they pile all of those enemies and all of those sections in a row. So if it goes poorly, like you can literally just get bodied and die entirely in a matter of screens. And there's not really a great shortcut back around there. It's kind of in this midpoint before you hit another main point to get back to or another elevator. So that is the most probably clench moment, aside from like rough Medusa RNG at the end. And here we're just waiting on cycles. Those uh, worm things that protrude from the walls, we actually cannot kill them right now. Uh, there's a special ability that Red can get that can kill them, but it takes a lot of orbs to buy that, and we definitely do not do that. So we go uh, right we are side only going to get one of those, so this is meant for you to go to both the left and the right side to activate those special uh, magical orbs so you can get up. We're going to only use one, and then we're going to use Blue's swing jump uh, bug to get up. Yeah, this is going to be another ladder jump that's a little bit annoying. Uh, this one because you kind of have to angle yourself out over the ladder. But all the other ones just get the liberty of jumping straight up, which is nice. Yeah, this is definitely the most kind of annoying thing to get consistently because it's not based on your performance necessarily. It's just if we're lucky. Oh, <sighs> that's the worst spawn we can possibly have. All right, I'm going to so, do this. So this is what we're talking about. With these spawns, it's really rough 
off because it's totally random where that guy is going to show up. And if it shows up right where we're coming out of the ladder, we're going to take that damage and it's going to hurt. Another one here. All right. I'm going to play this patiently, find out where he's going. All right, so he's going there, which is not great, but I mean, I guess I'll deal with him. Whoop. That was pretty close. Yeah, I got a little uh, overzealous with that one. All right, please, no bad spawn. Nice, okay. Uh, fun fact too, I discovered this and I was talking with Colt for, uh, for the run about how this kind of happens. Those enemies that uh, drop from the sky there, from the ceiling, this guy over here, uh, normally they activate when you're in a certain proximity. I've found that they behave um, a way that I'm used to on the first run, but it seems like after my first run, if I do tr like additional runs, um, what triggers them and how they behave is actually different. So I've gotten used to having like a different reactive mindset for when I'm doing like my second plus run of the day. I might even start restarting the game after my first finish run. Um, but I'm going to have to do a little more research to see if that actually impacts them, because it really feels like that's the case. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I don't think I can say I've missed that, but it has been a while since I've done 100%. Um, the devs are still updating the game. They just pushed a beta branch on Steam that allows for New Game Plus, and that's what I've been really interested in lately. So uh, it's a game, if you're interested in seeing this right now, it's only going to get better. So, And there's additional modes. I mean, like... New Game Plus aside, which is not your traditional New Game Plus, by the way, what they ended up doing is they they basically redesigned the entire map. So it's it's more like a second quest than like an actual normal New Game Plus, if you will. For sure, they kaizoed it up. Now we're gonna be patient, because apparently he's just not gonna move. I don't think I've ever seen him not move. That's I, interesting. Yeah, yeah, that was neat. All right, another max height ladder jump here. Um, but yeah, aside from the game plus, this is just in the beta branch. There is also monster mode, which allows you to play as a gargoyle that can fly around, and Black Knight mode, where you play as Black Knight. Both very unique uh, in and of themselves. Um, both very different. So like, you get a lot of game when you buy Astalon. Like, not only is the main game just large in and of itself, but all the additional modes and stuff like that. Yes, Where you have your typical invisible platforms that shine once in a while. They're not moving, luckily. So. That's the Maybe only way we get to see that. <laughs> Maybe we want to sneak in a donation while we're fighting a centaur? Yeah, no worries. Speaking of devs, we have a $100 donation here from Labs Works. Hey, Streiser and Colt, good luck. Thanks for bringing our game to the AGDQ. We're cheering for you to break it and set a new world record time. Matt Cap, Don LePage. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Uh, I'm taking marathon safety, so we're definitely not going to see uh, a new record today, but... Um, the, the, time, uh, the time definitely can come down, but uh, stopping for some of these safeties is going to lose enough time that we probably won't manage that. I'm just going to wait this out. Woo! -hoo. That's fine. Okay, That's well, fine. It's fine. It is fine because I'm actually going to open this elevator, which again, I wouldn't normally do, but marathon safety, if anything were to go wrong, this is this is our first point since doing all of those scary phantoms um, where we could potentially come back to easily. So, yeah, I'm, all that huge section that we just spent about 10 minutes on, uh, all progress is lost if you die and you get to that elevator. So, yeah, potential damage boost there, the fireball this least. This guy is kind of yes. the... Yes. Yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> nice. Sometimes the, the first guy immediately jumps up and bodies you, which does a ton of damage. If they attack you, it's a much less. Yeah, it actually does eight damage if they run into you, but it only does four if they swing and hit you. Um, so I actually want them to attack me there. The thing is, most of the time you try and jump over the first enemy and then end up landing on the second one because he jumps into you anyways. Um, so you kind of have to like plant yourself just on the edge and you can bait the attack. And uh, you know, I took four instead of eight, which is nice. Oh, 
Also, uh, it's worth mentioning, in-game time is great in this game. Um, we obviously, as speedrunners, encounter a lot of games where in-game time just doesn't work for our needs for one reason or another. Um, again, shout out to the devs who actually fixed in-game time for other modes so we could use it. Uh, there used to be like in-game time rollback on Black Knight mode and I think even monster mode and stuff like that. Um, but they fixed it for us. So we actually have consistent in-game time across all modes, which makes it great because you can play uh, on your platform of choice. Yep. All consoles and loads and PC choices, everything will be equal with the game time, luckily. Thanks, Thanks to the devs, figuring that out. So we're taking a little safety there, grabbing a shortcut just in case things go bad. I think we'll be fine at this point, but you never know. Yeah. I feel like the next biggest hurdle is definitely Medusa. Um, and that's just because you can get terrible RNG. My second practice run yesterday just got the worst RNG I think I've ever seen for Medusa. <laughs> I'm just like, let's just hope that doesn't happen today. Well, if it does, you get to fill your skill. So. Skill and panic. <laughs> Oops, I messed that up, so we're gonna reload the room here. People might have noticed the bosses so far aren't uh, like incredibly intimidating. We didn't have too much trouble. We had to deal with the worms randomness, uh, but so far, nothing's really that crazy. Um, especially the first boss. We just have to handle what RNG they throw at us. It's not like we're going to die. Uh, we're coming up on the last boss here eventually. We still have one more boss before that. And that's where our first uh, things could go very sideways moment kind of boss. So, Yeah. So here we're going to use Blue. He has a very fast attack speed. He can hit multiple parts of this mask. We have to break all four parts of it before we can start the next phase. Meanwhile, it's going to float around, throw some balls, or orbs. I, I think you guys like that. And we're going to switch back to Algus because he's going to do the most damage for this next phase where there's actually a health bar. And here you can see us just chunking away the health. We're taking a few damage boosts. Uh, here and there. That it's one not, wasn't intentional. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not a huge deal because we are going to take it after this fight. Oh, ghosts, really? Uh, this is the worst RNG we can get is when he spawns ghosts because he's not really active for us to damage while it spawns ghosts. And then we got Big Suck afterwards, which we wish we would have seen that sooner. And here he's probably going to push to the next phase automatically. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to take some damage here. We're a little bit high for health. Yeah, and it only does four. And there yeah. we go. Take a little more there, too. Not the best RNG, but still how you usually expect the fight to go. Yeah. And we we'll get more. Right, maybe want to sneak in. <laughs> yeah, want to sneak in one more donation while we got the orbs going on? No worries. We have a $100 donation here from Siberian Bull 9. Good luck, Streiser. Have a fantastic run. Thanks, Bull. Much appreciated. I maybe want to do one more or we're going to take an intentional death here. One more donation? Yep. yep. N no worries. We have a $25 donation here from Kona Rican. Have to donate for this amazing run of Astalon. Thank you so much, everyone, for the good luck. Awesome. Thank right. you. So here we're taking our last intentional death. We have a ton of orbs to spend. We're going to upgrade Algus as much as possible. And we're also going to get the special buff called Inner Fire and Death Orb. We're getting both. So Inner Fire's add a percent damage increase to every single bit of damage we do, and it's a limited use, so if we die, we would lose it and have to buy it again, but we're not planning on dying again. And then Death Orb allows us to get extra bonus health at the spot we less died. Uh, when we break an orb, you'll see it floating around, and that's going to give us extra safety and ability to damage boost through more things for this last fight. Yeah, conveniently, um, that last boss being located right next to where Medusa is is actually going to let us um, make use of the Death Orb. Yep. And then we take the elevator all the way up to the top, top, the apex, and our Death Orb is right around the corner. But first, some extra max life. All right, 
So we've got max attack speed, we've got really high attack, we've got a few points in defense. Uh, this is basically... We're all good to go. We're fully prepped. We are still a glass cannon. It is possible for me to take attacks that do like 14 damage and stuff like that in this fight. Uh, so I'm probably going to go into serious mode and pay attention. All right. So here, as you can see, our last three Gorgons, they all had their colors red, blue, and green. And we're just activating the elevator. You need all three dead to go up to the final counter here. Uh, we're going to see Black Knight again for the final time. And then a special boss you will see right after. These are really fun scenes too, because in these ending scenes, if you do have the extra characters, they actually appear in these scenes. Also, this is a jam. The game's got a lot of really good music. So here we're going to abuse the, the part where he continues to walk towards us until he's in melee range, and then we're going to jump over him real quick there, and then he's going to continue a... Uh, usually he stops and does a different attack. It's kind of a different pattern we're seeing here, but we're going to dodge as much uh, as we can. This is uh, pretty scary, yeah, actually. I've never seen that attack pattern, but what do you expect? It's GDQ. And so... At this point, you can't really do a whole lot of damage. We're going to get as much as we can in. I'm jumping off the wall with red, and then we're going to go back to Algus. And there is Black Knight. He is finally done for. Yeah, the uh, the worst part about that is really that's going to hinder my Medusa fight, and it's going to be really scary because, like, that was not a small amount of damage by any means. Yeah, typically you don't take any damage from Black Knight, hopefully. Uh, he does a ton of it just by touching him, unfortunately. So uh, this is going to be the last boss coming up. It's going to have three phases. Each time it'll have a health bar. When the third one depletes, that is going to be time. Technically, you can have four phases, including roots. Yeah, but there's no health bar for that, so. So here we just have to defeat all these roots. Luckily, one of our upgrades we got multi-hits them. Makes it a lot faster. Another reason why August is best. We're gonna jump up here to get a little early damage. And this fight has all sorts of things going on. It's completely random of what attacks are gonna be chosen. And we're gonna to try to not get hit by everything, hopefully. Yeah, I took those two damage boosts, kind of already regretting it. We're gonna see how this is gonna go. Yep. This is probably the hardest phase to get damage in because we have to jump and go towards the middle to hit it. Uh, only the jewel is active right now for damage. There's a little more to phase. go to phase two. All right, here we go. Yeah, this is really scary. I want more than 19 health for two and three. Let's see how it goes, I guess. Oh, my. Uh -oh. Well, now we got to be really careful here. We are in one hit KO range. Yeah, uh, I would not be surprised if this went south in phase three, but we're gonna see what kind of luck I'm gonna get. Beams, please. Nice. Oh, or, or no, no, rain. this is rain. So rain isn't necessarily bad. You just can't see it when it's above you and there's a health bar in the way. That's the only issue here, but time. time. I'm really shocked I didn't die there. That was great, um, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was like, oh. <gasps> And well, that's Aslan. Way to make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. You got, you got to keep it exciting for everyone. Let's let's take all the damage right at the start of the fight before it even gets difficult. <sighs> but yeah, that's uh, that's Aslan. Tears of the Earth. Any percent. Um, very very fun run. Uh, there's bits of RNG like you know we mentioned that the extra jump height for the blue jumps is RNG, which can be a little bit frustrating, obviously. Um, but I feel like there's kind of just the right amount of RNG in this run. Um, Tauros, again, RNG, Volantis, all the bosses. But it's enough to kind of make it exciting, but not make it, uh, like, oh, the RNG. Um, especially with a couple of your ladder jumps being right at the start and good early resets. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the game. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, as this story comes to a close, basically, Algus is gonna have his pact with Epimetheus uh, fulfilled. So the other two characters survive, 
and Algus is going to have his soul taken. Uh, not the case if you finish 100%. If you do do 100%, you can save Algus. Uh, so I highly recommend picking this game up and uh, giving it a try. Colt, did you have any uh, final parting words for us? Nope, just if, you, if you're loving it, if you're interested, pick it up. Uh, come join us on the Discord and start running it. It's pretty easy to start. Yeah, and the game's even got some really short categories. Like, if you want to kind of get your feet wet, um, not only boss rush is shorter, but even things like uh, Black Knight any percent and Monster Mode any percent are much shorter. Um, Tears of the Earth mode, like the main game mode, tends to be your longer game mode. Uh, coming in at, you know, my, my record's a 49, a low 50 with Marathon Safeties, I'm totally happy with. Um, you know, this is a 52, I got a 52 31 RTA on my side. Um, but yeah. Join us. Um, devs are amazing. Community is amazing. Game is phenomenal. And uh, I think that's it for me. I am Streiser86, but make sure you guys continue to hang out. We've got Sath coming up with Willow, and then uh, we've got KLM doing a couple runs after, including Bucky O'Hare. Uh, so really great runners. And I'm actually going to be back on Thursday. I'm going to be coming back to do the Castlevania Chronicles task to finish off our Castlevania block this week. So, uh, yeah, thanks GDQ for having me, and uh, I will look forward to being back in a couple days. Right, see you. Wow, well, what an incredible run of Astalon Tears of the Earth that was. Thank you so much, Streiser86, for that awesome speeder on there let's get some gdq claps in the chat virtual round of applause for streiser 86 we have a few donations coming in here that are cheering on streiser we have one from mal Krios for 25 dollars good luck streiser you always do so much for fundraising the least i could do was get up at the strize clench of dawn for this run thank you so much and i believe your good luck there definitely helped We also have a $50 donation here from Kurogamo with no comments, but again, thank you so much for your generosity. everyone games done quick would not be possible without the help of some of our amazing sponsors one of them being Dongen Entertainment. Dongen Entertainment is a publishing company striving to share amazing indie games with the world. We helped indie developers publish their games on PC, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, PlayStation and more. We have a growing catalog of over 25 games spanning a wide variety of genres and Dongen Entertainment are actually the publishers of Ask the Lawn Tears of the Earth. If you'd like to find out more, you can check them out at Dongen Entertainment. That's D A N G E N Entertainment.com.
Welcome back, everyone. You are watching Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online. Sandrock here with you for the next little bit. Uh, our next run will be Willow Any Percent by Safdresh. Real looking forward to that. But while we're waiting, I wanted to check in on our donation total and some incentives. So during that run of Ask the One Tears of the Earth, we took over $490,000 raised for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. We are oh so close to getting to half a million dollars raised for the Prevent Cancer Foundation. We are on such good pace. Can't we see that happen? Keep getting those donations in. And speaking of incentives, I said before, I know you all love Final Fantasy. The incentive for Bonus Game 3 is open, and Bonus Game 3 is going to be Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. And that is going to be a race between generically named and Dutch Potato. And that'll be happening in just over 12 hours from now, but only if we can get that donation incentive met. Right now, we're about $35,000 out of the $100,000 required to see that happen. We all love our Final Fantasy, so if you want to see that happen, be sure to keep those donations going in. And also speaking of Final Fantasy, just checking in on our incentive for Final Fantasy XIII, Blindfolded Dahaka Fight. We're currently at 35,584 out of 80,000 required to get that. That'll be happening potentially in about four hours time. We all like to see some awesome fighting action, especially when the runner can't actually see what they're doing. Incredible skills that's going to be showed off there, but only if you get your donations in. We have a $20 donation here from Alex. Can I get some hype for late night GDQ? I agree, can we get some hype? I'm pretty hyped up myself, almost 10 p.m. here, but I am just awake as anything. <laughs> we have a $500 donation here from Sir Squatch. I want to thank all the runners, the broadcast crew, and all the behind-the-scenes folk for setting these wonderful events up. Thank you so much, Sir Squatch. Your uh, thanks is very much appreciated. Alright everyone, I've got the green light from the production team for our next run, so let's give it to Safdresh for Willow Any Percent. Best of luck and take it away. <laughs> 